And here we go on our Monday Orange and Brown Talk podcast, and we are going to go through the Browns rookie class. It is rookie minicamp weekend, or it was rookie minicamp weekend. Not a whole lot to see at practice. It was kind of a glorified, I don't want to say a walkthrough, a lot of individual stuff. So I thought maybe what we could do is go through the draft class and figure out what we think the ideal roles for these players are. So let's just start at the top, and it rolls in year one. We're not talking five years down the road. Let's start at the top, Greg Newsom the second. Number 26 overall, is his, is his ideal role in year one the starting cornerback, Mary Kay? You know, I, I have a feeling it's probably going to end up that way uh, because so often when you draft a player in the first round, that player starts for you as a rookie. That's just usually how it goes. Now, he's got a lot of catching up to do. He's only 20 years old. He started or played in only... I think 21 games in college. Uh, So he doesn't have a ton of football under his belt. He was injured for at least three games in each of his seasons. So he's got to come up the learning curve. There's no question about that. Greedy Williams, if he's 100% healthy, I think has a little bit of the edge going in uh, because he's got that whole season under his belt. And he was determined to get better last year before the nerve injury nerve damage in his shoulder. So I think he does have the edge just in terms of experience right now. And he played at a high level in college as well. And he played at a very, very high level at LSU. So I I would have to think that that Greg is going to have to come in here and earn it. But those guys usually end up starting as rookies. Now, no matter how you slice it, he's going to play a lot. You need three starting cornerbacks and He's going to fill in for injuries, whether it be Denzel, who misses three or four games a year, Greedy, who might miss some time. He's going to be on the field. In terms of landing that starting job, I don't know if it's going to be week one. Once again, they might not have OTAs as we know them, although I suspect that players are going to start showing up for some OTAs after what's been going on in the NFL. Um, But I think I'm going to say that he's going to be a in the rotation early on and work his way into the starting lineup as the season goes along. Yeah. Ideally he's not a starter, right? Ideally Greedy Williams uh, is ready to go and plays like, uh, like somebody who is making a jump from, you know, his rookie year. Uh, And then you can have Greg Newsom coming along at a, a slower pace, not have to throw him in there right away. But you also want him to be like Terrence Mitchell light, you know, or, or maybe a step above Terrence Mitchell uh, and, and be the guy who's ready to go at any, at, at any moment. Okay. The next guy on the list is Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa. So he kind of got a lot of time by himself today uh, when we were out of practice, we're recording this on Friday. He got a lot of time by himself today, Mary Kay with Jason Tarver, because another guy, Tony Fields, who we're going to talk about a little later was not out there. So it was just sort of, you know, normally you're used to seeing these lines of guys just lined up and taking their reps. It was Owusu Koromoa taking his reps over and over again with, with Coach Tarver. He said today that he kind of sees his role as being that Will linebacker. What do you guys see his role being here in, in year one? I guess the, the question here is really kind of like how much is too much for this guy in year one? You know what? I, I really have a feeling that he is going to crack the starting lineup pretty early maybe in that first game. And if he doesn't start, if he's not on the field for the very first play, I think he's going to be in there a lot. I think that they want, that's the guy that they want. They're so excited about him. Again, they almost drafted him in the first round. If Greg Newsom had not been there and maybe one other guy hadn't been there, he was on that list there at number 26. If you're ready to draft a guy in the first round, uh, you're ready to, to pretty much throw him into the starting lineup, especially at a position like linebacker where you don't have a ton of guys uh, that are just tearing it up there. So I think he's going to start very early, maybe the first week. And let me say this about what I watched on Friday, the very first day of rookie camp about him. I watched him pick things up very quickly. They didn't have to tell him things twice. They told him something and he got it. Uh, They, they had him dropping back a lot. And I, and I noticed, and there was, there was another player where it wasn't quite like that, where, where another player wasn't just quite as fast in terms of picking up the coaching points and and jeremiah owusu koromoa uh he was getting it and he was hitting his mark and 
then he was also catching the ball. He was catching the football. So uh, I think that they're going to get him on the field early and often. And Dan, I'm sure you felt the same way I did watching him. He does look small. He is the size of a safety. I mean, there's just no <laughs> other way to slice it. He looks like a defensive back when you see him in person. He just does. He looks like a defensive back, but they don't care what he looks like. They don't care. But when I saw him, I thought, okay, this might be why he dropped. He looks pretty darn small, but he also looked fast. He also looked agile. He had good hands and he looked smart. Yeah. I mean, he's competing with, with, with Malcolm Smith and, and Mac Wilson basically to, to get on the field. And I'm sure they want him. He's probably going to get graded maybe on a little more of a curve than, than Mac, Malcolm Smith, as far as uh, trying to get him on the field. Uh, he said today that he, you know, third down, will linebacker, nickel, uh, nickel passing situations that, you know, that's the role that's made for him. And, you know, if he is the guy in week one, that that's great. Um, that means he, he's gotten to a point through camp and through the preseason games that, you know, they feel safe putting him out there other than, you know, over Malcolm Smith. It's good to know that they have that experienced guy there and Smith, if things don't work out right away, or if, you know, JOK makes a few too many mistakes early on, but uh, ideally he's that guy and, and you're getting him on the field because if you have him on the field and you also have Grant Delpit on the field behind him and John Johnson, you're in really good shape as far as, you know, countering the matchup problems that the offense is going to try and cause. So I, they want him out there because of his ability. And I have a feeling you're right, Mary Kay. They're going to do everything they can to make sure that happens. All right, let's talk about Anthony Schwartz. He was the other day two pick. And let's just put it out there. We watched him today in practice, and there were some issues with the hands. Had a number of drops. You know, everybody who was there saw them. Mary Kay, you asked Kevin Stefanski about it after. Well, look, we can't judge this guy on one rookie minicamp practice. But, you know, it, it's tough to see the first impression of a guy to see the ball on the ground as, as much as we did with, with Anthony Schwartz. Yep. And Dan, as you know, I took one for the team <laughs> and I asked the question yep. <laughs> because, you know, it, it needed to be asked. I think I thought it needed to be asked and, um, and it wasn't, you know, it was just something that we, you know, we just couldn't walk around the elephant in the room. He, he dropped a fair amount of passes today, significant amount. And we're talking about, you know, just easy little floaters and stuff like that. So I'm chalking this up to just rookie jitters, not knowing the guy that's throwing the ball to you, you know, just a lot of different things, you know, knocking off the rust a little bit, you know, this was Friday, the very first day of rookie minicamp. 